Welcome to a new DIY engineers video. In this video, I'll be going over the DRV8825 stepper motor driver, which is widely used in CNC machines, 3D printers, and other automation projects. We'll go over its pin functionality, wire into an Arduino Uno, work in a few examples, and more. So let's get started. Let's go over each pin and how to set it up on an Arduino Uno. So first we'll look at the VMOT or the power input for the actual pin that powers the motors. So this should be powered between 8.2 volts and 45 volts. In my case, I'm gonna be using 12 volts. We'll also need to use a capacitor between this VMOT pin and ground to protect from voltage spikes. I'm gonna be using a 100 microfarad capacitor, making sure it's rated for the voltage that I'm using and that I connect it in the right orientation. The ground will be the ground for the motor supply. We then have B1, B2, A1, A2 for motor outputs. These pins connect to the two pairs of coils using the stepper motor. You might need to use a multimeter to identify the pairs of wires that are in each loop for your stepper motor. Mine came with proper documentation that tells me which is which. Now there's the fault pin. This pin outputs a low signal if there's an issue, like an over temperature or over current protection being triggered. Optional to use, but helpful for diagnostics. I'm gonna leave it disconnected. Then you have the ground that goes to the Arduino Uno. We have the direction pin, which controls the stepper motor direction. So a high or low signal changes the rotation of direction. And I'm connecting this to the Arduino IO pin number two. Then you have the step, which receives pulses to make the motor move by one step. Each pulse will equal one step or micro step, depending if you're using the micro step in configuration, more on this later. But each motor will have a defined number of steps per revolution. So mine has 200 steps per revolution. So if I wanted to rotate one full rotation per second, I need to be running the stepper motor at 200 steps per second. Also, 200 steps per revolution means that each step will move the motor by 1.8 degrees. This is basically a 360 degrees divided by 200. So what if you want to move in smaller increments than 1.8 degrees? Well, that's when micro stepping comes in. I'm going to be connecting the step pin to IO pin number three, the Arduino. Now, sleep when pulled down enables the driver to enter into low power mode, disabling it from the outputs and conserving energy. To keep the DRV8825 driver active, we need to connect the sleep to the microcontroller 5 volt or 3.3 volt pin. You could also choose to wire this to an IO pin. I'm going to connect mine to the 5 volt. Now, on reset, basically when you pull it low, it resets the driver and clears any faults. It's generally tied directly to sleep, the one that we just talked about by default, so it keeps the driver awake. I'm going to connect these two together. Then you have the micro stepping pins, M0, M1, M2. These can be configured in various combinations to enable different levels of micro stepping. So whether or not you want full steps, half steps, quarter steps, etc., all the way to one over 30 second steps. So for example, if the input you want is for half micro stepping, then your motor will move at half a step for each step signal that we send to the stepper motor driver. So you'll be moving instead of 1.8 degrees per step, you will be moving 0.9 degrees. Now, as I said, the stepper motor can take steps as small as 1 32nd, but watch out because micro stepping can cause an issue at high speeds depending on the microcontroller that you use. I'll go over that in more detail later. Now, for me, I'm going to be connecting the micro stepping pins M0 to IO pin number 7, M1 to IO pin number 6, and M2 to IO pin number 5. Finally, we have the enable pin. Setting this pin to low enables the driver. Setting it to high will disable it. I'm going to leave this disconnected, but know that depending on your application, you might want to connect it and enable and disable as needed. Now, let's jump into setting the current limit. This will enable to protect both the motor and the driver. You'll need to measure the reference voltage and adjust it using a potentiometer on the DRV8825. So first, let's make sure to disconnect the motor driver from the motor to prevent accidental damage. Now set your multimeter to measure the voltage and connect the black probe to the ground of the DRV8825. Then go ahead and place the positive terminal of your multimeter and connect it to the metallic part of your potentiometer. You can do this basically by attaching your multimeter to a screwdriver and then go ahead and measure the reference voltage. Now, you want to set this reference voltage or VREF to the motor's current limit divided by two ohms. And this current limit is the motor's rated per phase current. So in my case, it's 0.4 amps. So I divide by two ohms and I get 0.2 volts or 200 millivolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my potentiometer until I hit around 200 millivolts. Once done, you can reattach your motor. Now let's go ahead and test some examples with an Arduino IDE and an Arduino Uno to see how this works. Let's start with moving the stepper motor from one position to another. So I'll be showing you the code here in Arduino IDE, but know that you can get this and other examples on my DIY engineers blog post. So take a look and copy and paste if you want to go faster. Otherwise, I'll go and explain the code line by line here. So before we start, you need to make sure on the library section that you install the Axel stepper 
library. And you can see here I have it installed. Once you search it, you can just go ahead and click install. Mine doesn't let me because I already have it, but you can see it will look like this, install. So in this code, the first thing I do is include that library that I just talked about via include and then axel stepper.h. Then I'll define the pins. So in my Arduino, as we talked about, I'm connecting the direction pin to two and the step pin to three and the micro step in pins under five, six, and seven. Here, I'm gonna define the steps per revolution for my stepper motor. Mine is a 200 steps per revolution stepper motor. So that's what I put in. Micro stepping, I'm gonna define it as one. And then later, I'm gonna define the, the pin settings of five, six, and seven to be consistent consistent with that, we can always change it. Here I add the instance of the driver. So from the axle stepper library, I call a stepper motor and I'll say that it's a driver. And then I provide the step pin and direction pin. And then here I'm just going to create a function to convert steps to the side rotation. So it's going to be the desired number of rotations times the steps per revolution times micro stepping. So if I want to do one rotation, we'll get one times 200 steps per revolution times micro stepping. So in this case one, so the output will be 200. So after all that is done, we'll go under void setup and we define the pin modes for our micro stepping pins, which are all outputs, and then we'll define them as low or high. As written right now, I had them all as low, and that's consistent with no micro stepping. So that's why I had this as a one. Then we're going to define the maximum acceleration and revolutions per minute. I have it as 300. Your motor might be able to go faster. This is just for the purposes of the code, what I'm setting it at. I don't want the motor to speed up beyond 300 RPM. And then we convert this into steps per second by multiplying by the micro stepping, steps per revolution, and divided by 60. So that converts us from revolutions per minute to steps per second. And then here we pass that into our stepper motor library and then we do the same with acceleration I'm gonna design it define it as 3,000 revolutions per minute per second to get it into acceleration we use a similar equation to turn that into acceleration in steps per second square so that's nice micro stepping nice steps per revolution divided by 60 and then we're gonna define the current position of the stepper motor as zero now as I said this code was to move relative position or to move from A to B so step one we're gonna start at the zero where we were we'll put that vertically looking up here in my stepper motor and we're gonna move to that three o'clock position so I'm telling stepper motor to move a quarter of a turn. This convert rotational position to steps is the function I created here. If you don't like that, you could delete all that and just say stepper move two and enter the number of steps. This is just converting it for us. So in this case, I will be rotating 50 steps or a quarter of the uh, required rotations, which is 200 steps per revolution. So that's how I get the 50. But here I'm just going to enter a quarter. And then this is going to have a while loop that is going to run until the distance to go. Once it's zero, it will stop. That's the stepper run here. Allow it to run. And once it's done, it's going to stop, move to the next step which will be a delay of 500 milliseconds or half a second and then i'm telling it to move to the position nine which i'm telling the stepper to move to 0.75 so this is nine o'clock so that's three quarters of a full turn same thing here as i just explained go until the distance to go is not zero and then we go and rotate to half a turn now this is absolute position i'm not telling it to, to rotate a quarter of a turn and then rotate three quarters of a turn i'm telling it to go to that position relative to the starting position which was zero so this is going to rotate a quarter turn and then this is going to go to the position position of three quarters of a turn, which will be half a turn more from where I left it off here. And then when I tell it here to go to half a turn, it's going to that position. So it's going to go from three quarters to half. So it's going to rotate in the opposite direction to get there. And then when I tell it here to go to one turn, it's going to go from half to one, rotating in that direction. And then I'm telling it to go back to zero, which would go from one to that same position, but rotating in the opposite direction where it came from. Then we'll go 200 milliseconds and start it again. So the whole point of this example is to show you how with the stepper motor, you go, you can go to specific positions just with this move command. So why don't we go ahead and test it. Let me connect my Arduino Uno and then we'll go. Now you can see the bottom left screen now shows Arduino Uno connected on COM7. I need to just make sure, yeah, port 7 is selected, board is set as Arduino Uno. If you don't find it, you need to go here under boards, make sure you have your right board selected. So with those things done, I can go ahead and click upload. So it's compiling the sketch, uploading, done uploading. All right, so now I can go ahead and power up my overall system and we can see the test. All right, so here we have the stepper motor. It's on position zero, like we talked about. It'll rotate to three o'clock and it'll go here then back here, finally here, and then all the way around to the beginning. So let's just test that. So once I plug this, everything will be powered on and it'll start going. All right, you guys get it. Let's move on to the next test. Now, in this next example, we're gonna be rotating the motor at a constant speed. In this case, everything else here is the same at the beginning. 
except here we're going to be setting a desired speed in this case i called the desired rpm and set it to 60. so we're going to be rotating the motor at 60 revolutions per minute or one revolution per second basically which is also for my motor 200 steps per revolution with no micro stepping so after that i also define the max speed same as before and i'm going to set the steps per second speed with this equation which is the same as before and then also the max and pass those two to the set max speed line which we used before but also the set speed after that on the void loop we just run step or run speed and that's it so let's go ahead that and upload that to the arduino uno done so now let's test it All right, so you pretty much see it. It's rotating at one revolution per second. So in this next example, I have the same code as before, with the only exception that I changed the speed to one revolution per minute. So this will be the equivalent of the hands of a clock, specifically the seconds, where it'll be doing a full rotation once a minute. So in this one, we're gonna set still the micro stepping to one. At the same time, I'll show both on the screen at this, you know, running together so that you can see the difference. We're gonna be testing this other one where it's the same code again, one revolution per minute, but I have micro stepping set to the max to 32. And you're gonna see, of course, these also set to high to enable that micro stepping. And we're gonna be seeing, seeing them running in parallel. So you can kind of visually see the difference between the two. So let's do that now. Now, previously, I talked about how if you're running your stepper motor at one 30 second micro stepping, you could run into issues. Now, the Arduino Uno is limited to around 4,000 to 5,000 steps per second when using libraries like the Axel stepper that we're using. This limitation is due to several factors. One is clock speed. The Arduino Uno operates at 16 megahertz. So each step signal sent to the DRV8825 requires the Arduino to process instructions for timing, direction control, step pulse generation, etc. There's also the complexity and interrupts with within the Excel step library. And then there's micro stepping in general, right? Like higher levels of micro stepping require more steps for each revolution. So for example, if you wanted to run at 200 steps per second to do a full rotation, right? So one rotation per second, and you wanna do one 30 second micro stepping, well multiply your 200 steps per second times 32, right? That would require 6,400 steps per revolution, which is above the 4,000 to 5,000 step per revolution that you could do on an Arduino Uno. So there's a limit to rate depending on your microcontroller and the capacity. So in this video you can see how the stepper motor running at full steps is rotating faster even though they both have an input of 120 rpm. As the video progresses you can clearly see the full steps outpacing the micro stepping one. Here I'm playing the video again you can see as the video progresses there's a lag they're no longer synchronized and the micro stepping one is clearly behind. Now, if you do need to do high micro stepping at higher speeds, there are other microcontrollers you could use, right? There's Arduino Do, which has a 84 megahertz processor. This can handle up to 40 to 50,000 steps per second. There's the Teen C 4.1, which has 600 megahertz processor. This can go as high as 200,000 steps per second. And then there's also the ESP32, which is a favorite of many. That can go to 240 megahertz, and it can do between 40,000 and 50,000 steps per second. So so there are other options if you need to do high micro stepping at high speeds on your motors. So 
just know that it's a limitation if you notice odd behavior at high micro stepping at high speeds just know that that could be one of the things and that there are options out there to solve this now if you're using multiple stepper motors or simply want to keep wiring to a minimum then you should consider using one of the arduino cnc shields it has a dedicated slot for up to four stepper motor drivers and connects directly to the arduino uno watch my related video on this for more details now let's quickly compare the drv8825 to a couple of other stepper motor drivers out there there's the a4988 which I've done videos on before, and there's also the TMC2208. The A4988 has lower cost and supports up to 16 micro stepping, it has lower current capacity compared to the DRV8825, and is suitable for less demanding applications. The TMC2208 is capable of extremely quiet operations. It supports up to 116 micro stepping, so similar to the A4988, but it can interpolate steps for smoother movement. And this one's usually a bit more expensive and complex to configure. Alright, this concludes this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye.